you can encounter different types of proposal. Um, and that kind of goes without saying. And these really come from in internal and external directions, I suppose. So if we just take a quick look at the external first. In the external environment, you may have what would be a response to a tender. So there is an e-tenders system within the EU and within Ireland where requests for services are put up. And then you could respond to that by making a case for that service. So someone may say, we need to be able to analyze 100,000 samples for glucose and they give you the timeline and et cetera, et cetera. And then you can put a proposal together, a business case saying that we can analyze them. It's going to cost this so much. We can do it this quickly. And here's our quality mechanisms and so on. So you can respond to that external proposal by coming up with something where you're trying to effectively get business for a laboratory. And these proposals come up all the time on e-tenders, um, but usually we're flat out as it is, so it's not as common for those to kind of feed into their day-to-day -day work, let's say. However, they may be a very valuable source of revenue, and it's essentially how a lot of the contract research organizations might work, where they're taking in samples as part of a clinical trial and doing all those analysis on them. They're making these type of cases all the time. At an internal level, you may have the very common one of equipment replacement. And in that case, you're really looking at upgrading or replacing equipment that's come to the end of its natural life. And you're again looking at a business case. So is the equipment, for example, that's at the end of its life taking so much resource to keep going that it actually has it's beginning to cost more than it's worth to keep it going so if you replace that equipment would it mean your running costs go down your time spent fixing it all the time goes down your service costs for the engineers go down even though you have to buy the new equipment so there often would be a break-even point then within a couple of years maybe the new equipment is faster than the old equipment which means you can now accommodate more samples that's more income that's a faster you know achievement of that break-even point or what about developing a new service so you want to be able to give an option that was hitherto unavailable to your clients or your end users so that's a new test that hasn't been in your lab before that's uh, a new parameter that they basically haven't had before. So it may be that the new service development could end up being cost neutral because you're providing a new service, but you're also getting income for that. So it's kind of much of a muchness in a way about how you might approach it. Um, it could also be that you're actually in the lucky situation that this might be an income generating measure that this new service is something that everybody wants and because everybody wants it it's easy to sell it and if it's easy to sell it then you have a market pretty much built in straight away to actually generate the cost that you need to support that um, equipment and it could even be that a new service could lead to cost savings overall and I suppose income generating cost savings are kind of related in a way um, but cost savings could be because you could automate a process and then free up somebody else's time. It could be that it might reduce the error rate. It could be that it enables you to build lean practices around what you're doing and so on and so on. So all of those different aspects working together can provide cost savings, you know, for a new service development which go above and beyond what you might expect from just a normal replacement of equipment. So those types of proposals really probably are the majority of what you might encounter.